So today I'm talking about the most common concerns that I see from new backpackers in getting started in their backpacking and the fears that are associated with getting out on some of your first few backpacking trips. Now, if you don't know, I actually work as a guide teaching intro to backpacking classes at a local university. So we spend a lot of time with brand new backpackers that have never been out on the trail before and fielding a lot of questions around the idea of getting started backpacking. Concern number one and one of the most common questions that I see from new backpackers is what food do I take on a backpacking trip and how much food do I need to carry with me? So my approach when it comes to food is to keep it simple because this is my kitchen. This is what I am taking to cook my food. I've got a small pot and a small stove and this is not going to make it possible for me to cook gourmet meals out there in the backcountry. So keeping that simple mindset will help you find foods that are simple to cook, but also taste good. The first example and option is to take meals like this that are freeze dried or dehydrated, where all you do is add boiling water to the bag, and now you've got a really good meal for you to eat in the backcountry. But these are nice because they do pack a lot of calories. They for the most part are really good tasting and they're simple to cook. But then I like to think about other foods that are not meals in a bag that I can take with me. That would be things that provide good calories that are also easy for me to eat. Breads like bagels and pitas and tortillas that I put peanut butter onto and honey that are really good calories packed with protein, good fats that fuel your body while you're out on a backpacking trip. Taking fruits like an apple or an avocado, dry salami and cheese that also provides a bit of a difference than just trail mix or things that can seem kind of bland. I also like to take candy bars. Candy bars provide a good amount of calories. They taste great. And just having that sugar boost can make a difference in feeling the energy that you need to tackle the next few miles or a hard climb or something that you've got ahead of you. But that is my approach to food. And yes, it is more complicated than that, but it at least gives you the idea of my approach to get started with the food you could take with you. Concern number two is what gear do I take with me and how do I know it's the right gear for me to use? When I approach this, it comes from the mindset of making sure that I've got the essential gear that I need dialed in. That's gonna be things like your backpack, your shelter, your sleep system, which is your sleeping pad, your sleeping bag, your layering system, making sure that you are protecting your body, keeping it warm and comfortable, first aid, cooking, all of those essential things that play into your experience being positive. Now, whether or not it is the right gear is going to come down to is it built for the conditions that you are going to experience out on the trip that you've got planned? So make sure that you've got the right tool for the job. That is such an important part of having the right gear. Now, do you need to spend a lot of money for you to have a good experience on a backpacking trip? The answer is no. Like you can spend a minimal amount of money, even borrow gear, rent it, and still have a fantastic experience out in the backcountry. When it comes down to what you choose, that really is personal preference and what your budget allows and what you want that gear to provide from an experience standpoint. Concern number three is how do I find places to go backpacking? If I've never done this before, where can I go? Well, I've got a few solutions for you to be able to find good places to go backpacking. The first option is there's a good chance that you know somebody in your life, a friend, a family member, an acquaintance, a work friend that has done some level of backpacking. They would be a great resource and maybe even ask them, hey, I wanna get into backpacking. Will you take me on a backpacking trip and show me one of your favorite places? But then second is just the good old Google search bar <laughs> and search backpacking in X location. Where can I go backpacking in this location? You're going to end up with blog posts and write-ups and such for 
those areas for you to find places to go backpacking. The nice thing about that is they're going to share information on how strenuous the trail is, where the trailhead is, rules and regulations, if permits are needed, other requirements for being in that area. You can also look at maps. Go to a retailer and get those Nat Geo maps for your area and see what options there are for local trails. And lastly, go to a local gear shop in your area and ask the people that work there where you can go backpacking. It's possible that they do some kind of guided trips or they're going to have several resources available for you to get out into your local area as well. And then concern number four is how do I sleep warm and comfortable out in the backcountry? I am so concerned about it being cold, not enjoying myself and just getting a terrible night of sleep. I see this concern all the time. And I see this in three parts. The first is something you probably aren't thinking about and that is your shelter. Your shelter provides so much protection against the cold and the wind and other elements like rain, snow, etc., that would cause problems in you being able to get a good night of sleep. But then you've also got to have a good sleep system. So the second is your sleep system being properly rated for the conditions that you're going to be in, the temperatures you're going to experience, and make sure that your sleeping bag is rated properly. That if you're going to be experiencing, for example, temperatures at 30 degrees, your sleeping bag is rated for 20 or even 10 degrees because sleeping bags are typically rated at their limit rating, meaning the coldest you would want to take that bag down to. So the comfort rating is gonna be 10 degrees or so higher from the number that you see on the sleeping bags. And then second is your sleeping pad, making sure you've got a properly insulated sleeping pad that's going to give you that barrier of protection from the cold ground to your body inside of your tent. Making sure that you've got a R value of three or higher for most seasons that you're gonna go out on a backpacking trip. That is the baseline that I would start with. And then third has to do with campsite selection. This makes a huge difference in your ability to sleep warm and comfortable on a backpacking trip. If you choose a campsite selection that is in a sink where cold air just drops and is gonna be down where you're sleeping, chances are you're gonna sleep colder than you would if you could get yourself up higher up on a ridge or just not down next to water or in a sink where that cold air is gonna fall. Concern number five has to do with animals, insects, and just the unknown of being out in the backcountry. Things that you've never possibly experienced before. I see a lot of people very concerned about animals, particularly bears in bear country, but other things like moose, maybe cougars could be a problem as well. And in all of the years that I've been backpacking, I've had two encounters with wild animals, moose in fact, that put me on edge and were scary moments, but I've never felt like my life was in danger being out in the backcountry in the sense of animals attacking me or <laughs> being a problem. I think it's just important to remember that you are in their, in their home and how you conduct yourself where you choose to uh, set up your camp as well as how you handle your food makes a big difference in how those animals are going to react to you being there. Animals need to feel threatened for them to attack a human. I don't think they're sitting there twiddling their thumbs, their hooves, whatever, <laughs> and thinking, okay, here's this human, let's go get them. Animals are much less of a concern than I think they need to be. Insects are also something that are just simply annoying. Mosquitoes are a bother, horseflies are a bother, ticks can be a problem. So simply carry with you the necessary insect repellent or items that help you manage being out in the bugs a bit more. And then lastly, the unknown of being outside. And a lot of times this comes down to being out in the dark and the quiet. A lot of us have never experienced the quiet of being out in the backcountry. And that can be like something that can cause some stress and anxiety because it's dark. You don't know what's happening around you and it's very quiet. So what I like to do in that case of 
I kind of freaked myself out by being in the quiet and thinking Bigfoot's lurking around or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Is I'll just go into my tent and I'll read a book or I'll listen to a podcast or watch a movie, watch a TV show, listen to some music quietly. Something that just gives me the ability to switch that anxiety into something more productive that makes me feel more safe and comfortable being out there. Thank you so much for watching today, guys. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. Consider joining my Patreon. I've got links for that down in the description. Hope you guys have an awesome day. We'll catch you on the next one. See you later.